Hi there, welcome to Principles and History of Urban Health. My name is Sean Mohammed, and I'm really excited to be the course instructor. I'm a primary care physician by training, so I spent much of my professional career working in inner city Cleveland, Ohio, where I worked with adolescents, particularly uh, with at-risk youth uh, who were challenged by issues around substance abuse and risky sexual behavior. So in addition to working with vulnerable populations, I was also on the board of the Free Clinic of Greater Cleveland, which is the second largest and second oldest provider of free health care in the country. So that really speaks to my passion and interest in this topic. So for me, public health is really about caring for people who need the most help, right? So what we really want to be able to focus on in this course is an awareness of the health problems faced by urban populations, the idea of how do we create policies and programs that will serve those at-risk populations, and how do we link those individual to ser individuals to services that are going to help them. Those services need to be available and affordable, they need to be accessible and appropriate given sort of those vulnerabilities, whether that's by virtue of economic issues, by virtue of race and ethnicity, by virtue of language barriers, et cetera. So finally, we also want to be able to evaluate how good a job are we doing in terms of these initiatives, whether they be policies or programs. I'm the director of the Masters of Public Health program. And my primary interests are in you, in developing a public health workforce. So how do we train public health professionals to care for vulnerable urban populations? And that work can be through government agencies, through nonprofit agencies, or through academic institutions. My main focus is thinking about knowledge and skills. So in terms of knowledge, I really want you to be able to think systematically through urban health issues and learn how the urban living environment creates health advantages or disadvantages to individuals, families, and communities who live in urban settings. So we'll do this by examining an urban framework which addresses issues, whether they be chronic diseases like heart disease, diabetes, depression, and anxiety, or if they're more short-term but concerning issues like infectious diseases. So for example, influenza, tuberculosis, or other health issues that impact these vulnerable populations like the elderly, like children, like the homeless, or racial and ethnic minorities. So that's the first component. The second is to really learn the fundamentals of the public health system and how does public health work? How is it practiced at the local level, the state level, the national level, and global level? So in addition to the knowledge base of particular health issues and sort of different uh, approaches in terms of public health systems, we want to always bear in mind this third component, which is exploring how principles of social justice and health equity are critical to addressing the urban health disparities that we find really around the world. When we think about the foundations that you'll be learning, it's really to set you up for a successful career, whether that be in urban health research or urban health policy and advocacy, or urban health education and health promotion. When we talk with our employers or, and public health professionals, some of the key professional development skills that they're looking for are teamwork, communication skills, and the ability to write and evaluate or analyze these urban health issues. 